So, an really interesting video for you today and going to be quite a short one. Now, last week, there was lots and lots of rumors circulating on the interwebs about a product which is due for release soon, potentially, um, and there were some images which were leaked out. And you know what it's like when tech gear is released? There's always like these leaks that come out, quite often happens with things like the iPhone. But it's the first time ever I think I've seen this happen with a piece of audio gear, which is quite exciting. This piece of equipment you're going to be very familiar with. Quite a few of you probably already own the first version. I'm talking, of course, about the Rodecaster Pro 2. So if you want to find out if the product's real, if the screenshots that have been circulating around are accurate, uh, stay tuned for the end of this video because I'm going to be showing you what I have sat just the side of me. But first, if you're new to this channel, I'd love a subscription. I'm always posting reviews um, about equipment like the Rodecaster and various other tools and uh, pieces of equipment uh, which are all about audio. Also talking about growing your podcast, growing a radio station. So if you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and we'll also appreciate a big thumbs up. I'm found at radio.co, podcast.co, matchmaker.fm and Q Podcasts. So you can go and check them out as well. Okay, so now let's get down to it. Is the Rodecaster Pro 2 real? And I'm pleased to say, absolutely. Yes, it is. I've got one right here in front of me and I've been sent this to uh, review by Rode. Um, had this actually here at the office for a couple of weeks, but we've been under embargo, so we couldn't talk about it until today. Now, due to a couple of technical issues, Unfortunately, I'm not able to provide a full review or demo of this device today. And I think a lot of the other reviewers who have been sent this will probably be in the same situation. So I wanted to clear up a couple of things. Firstly, obviously Rode um, are gonna be taking pre-orders this week for this device. They have promised that it's gonna be ready to go. Uh, so if you're thinking about purchasing one or you're gonna be placing a pre-order, the device will come to you uh, when it's ready for, for kind of um, shipment and it will be working flawlessly. There are a few technical issues which mean, as I say, I can't unfortunately demo this today. But what I've wanted to do today is talk through uh, what I've been sent and also talk through how it compares to the original Rodecaster, uh, both in terms of the kind of layout and features of it and some of the features which are coming up on this device. And when we do a full video review and a walkthrough, we'll go into these features in a lot more detail. Okay, so I wanted to run through a few of the new things about this and how it differs to the original Rodecaster Pro. First thing you'll notice is this unit's a lot more compact. Um, we're gonna get the original version up just so you can sort of see a side-by-side -side comparison, but straight away, you know, it's kind of more suited to kind of like a desktop environment. It's gonna occupy less real estate on your desktop. And you know, when you've got various other things going on, mice and keyboards and speakers and all that sort of stuff, you know, unless you've got a huge desk, you kind of want everything to be a little bit more compact. So they've kind of done a pretty good job of reducing the size whilst retaining kind of all the various buttons and options and switches that the original version has. The second thing which we've been promised about this unit, which is really exciting, is it's gonna be a lot more configurable. Now, if you've ever worked in professional radio studios or a digital production studio producing music, generally speaking, digital desks these days, you know, you can assign things to different channels, a lot of the buttons are more configurable, so you can use them to control various aspects of your software. Well, so if you, for example, are producing different shows and you require different configurations, well, you can just switch between save configurations, adjust the processing on the channel, and it's all very much driven based on presets. So you might want to have two mics for one show, four mics set up for another show. Depending on the podcast you're recording, you can assign uh, different config options, different presets, etc. You know, another thing they've added into this unit is better preamps. Um, we still noticed when using sort of gain-hungry microphones like the Shure SM7B, which is very, very popular in podcasting. Pretty much all of the uh, studios that we fitted out have got Shure SM7Bs in, and you'll see them used across a variety of different podcasts. And it is notoriously gain-hungry. They've added 21 dB of gain extra into the preamps on this device. So whatever microphone you're, you're going to be using, there's plenty of gain there, and you're not going to get that kind of thing where you have to whack your preamp right to the top as long as you kind of get a bit of a background noise or a hiss and that kind of thing. Okay, so here we go. These are the two units side by side. Um, as you can see, uh, it's not drastically smaller. Uh, the height and fact of the unit is pretty much identical. A little bit of a narrower profile, so it's not as high up as the original, but it's not as wide. So if I kind of put these in front of each other, you'll see, you know, it's a little bit slimmer in terms of the width of the device kind of just makes it more neat. And I somehow feel like this feels like it's just slightly kind of more solid 
uh, maybe than the original. A little bit heavier as well, um, only a touch I'd say, um, but you know, as you can see side by side, there's quite a few design differences. Uh, we've got the headphones kind of in a nice neat row now. Um, there's no dedicated uh, monitor, although this wheel here I believe will probably adjust the volume of your speakers, but I think it can also do other things as well. We've got this numbers one and two, which again will allow you to switch between different banks of options. And as you can see, um, one of the main differences versus the original, which is probably why it's not as wide, is we've actually got two less faders, but because these are digitally assignable, um, I don't think that's going to necessarily pre present a problem because originally, you know, you've got a dedicated fader for USB, you've got a dedicated fader for your phone channel, you've got a dedicated fader for your uh, Bluetooth. Now, you're not necessarily going to be using all of those functions at once. So the chances of you actually needing uh, all eight faders on the original device are quite slim, but you can make these faders work better for you because anyone could be your Bluetooth or anyone could be mic one, or you, you could basically assign each fader depending on what you want to do. So there we go, the cat is out the bag. The Rodecaster Pro 2 is on its way. Uh, Pre-orders, I believe, open this week. Uh, as I say, we're very fortunate to have a unit to play with, and as soon as we can fire this thing up, we're going to be putting it for its paces, we're going to be testing it out, we're going to be doing a full comparison video with the original Rodecaster, plus talking about all the new features and functionality that are coming on this new unit. So if you're interested in buying the Rodecaster Pro 2, hit that subscribe button right now, turn on your notifications. I'm hoping to have a video up uh, talking through all of the features and functionality, all the new stuff which you're gonna get by the end of this week, and we'll have a comparison coming in the next couple of weeks too. Thanks very much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you're thinking about buying this. Do you think it's a worthy upgrade of the original Rodecaster Pro? Um, be curious to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, I'm very really excited to start testing this and putting it through its paces um, and I'm sure our production team as well are really excited to start using it uh, for client work when we're producing podcasts as well. So more videos on this coming up very shortly. Subscribe for more and I'll speak to you soon. What makes the difference between a successful radio station and a failed project? Well, after working with tens of thousands of broadcasters over the past 15 years, and helping lots of people start their own radio stations, I see the same mistakes being made time and time again. So what I've done is I've put together a guide called the Five Step Radio Startup Checklist, which really covers everything from concepting your radio station to marketing it. And this guide, I believe, will make the difference between you having a successful venture with longevity and creating something that doesn't quite hit the mark. Go and grab your copy now for free at jamesm.com slash radio. Just enter your name and your email address and I'll send it over to you straight away. You're going to find it really useful. There's tons of information there which will help you with concepting and launching your brand and bringing it to market.